Hi, I'm Bookie, and I'm going to share some of the strategies that I use to make my science lessons more inclusive when I teach students with SEND, special educational needs and disabilities, also known as having additional learning needs. One important strategy is getting my students to learn through their senses, bearing in mind where I've got students who have autism or complex learning needs, their senses may be overwhelming. So for example, you know, they may experience a strong sense of smell or um, disturbed by loud sounds, etc. So I try and use materials that describe keywords, for example, adhesive, sticky. So rather than using the word sticky, just linking it to adhesive and for resources that they are familiar with. Sounds like sonorous, ringing, ringing sounds, or even using things like this eggshell to describe things that are brittle, very easy to break. I also think about the learning instructions that I provide so that I don't overwhelm students with a lot of information at one time. With a lot of text sometimes can be very daunting for some students and actually distract them from learning. So if I just give an example of this, this is a review activity. They can copy and complete it or actually just share their answers with me. But there are three aspects. So you can sometimes laminate this. If you want this to last even longer, you can laminate this. But you can just use a sticky to have the first sentence. The first sentence gets them to recap what they've actually looked at. And they can just say one thing that they've learned today, etc. What I've also done, and I'll bring it a little bit closer, you can see is there's a tick. So once they've completed it, they could actually see that they're actually working through it. And there's a tick there as well. With that regard, it's really important for my students to repeat their learning in ways that are not patronising and ways that actually help to increase their working memory. So I use a number of different strategies. So, for example, I may get my students to use YouTube in the lessons when I'm teaching them one to one, where they have control over the keyboard and mouse. And they can actually go over and revisit key aspects, listen to explanations or see demonstrations more um, simply. Another way that I actually get students to um, revisit is if they feel unsettled, it could be maybe at the beginning of a lesson when we introduce a starter that looks at recapping prior le learning, or maybe at the end, we can actually walk around and I will just ask them some quick review questions. So it, with some of the students who need to move as they actually learn, this works really, really well. Another strategy that I use is what I refer to as my stick and loop. Now, these items are normally laminated. So if I just give you an example here, just bring it a little bit closer. They're normally laminated and it's like a card sort in a way. Um, so the students basically just take the sentences and match them to the correct words or images they're actually looking at. Lastly, what I like to try and get my students to do is do their homework in a way that's not so onerous. For my students who find um, homework quite a cumbersome task, they might be not used to the learning routines uh, with that. I've used this idea called a homework postcard. I've got this from someone on Twitter. And basically what it does is uh, it displays the keywords within the lesson that's actually been used and it gives a learning instruction for um, the child's parent, carer or guardian. It allows my students to revisit and rehearse what they've actually learned so they could actually rehearse and revisit key words and find ways to explain in whichever ways work best for them what they've actually learned to their parents, carers and guardian who then sign it off and the homework is brought back to my lessons. So these are some of the strategies that I actually use and I hope that, I, that you find them useful. I will now hand over to Pray for Ramya.